Are you wondering why the price range is so large when shopping for an overhead crane? Wondering how much your overhead crane might actually cost? In this video, we look at seven things that affect the price of your overhead crane quote. My name is Ben, and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today, Todd White, Manager of Engineering and Project Management, is going to walk us through seven things your sales rep is going to look at before determining your quote. These are seven things that you can take a look at yourself to give you a better idea of how the cost of your overhead crane will be impacted. So, let's get into it. I have just entered our customer's newly acquired facility that they want to get up and running with a new crane system. They would like the crane system to be four bays long, maximize the width possible, as well as the height possible. They want to get as much hook coverage side to side, as well as as much hook height that they can, considering the, the overhead obstructions, the side obstructions, and these are all the kinds of things that we want to take a look at today. So let's get rolling. So the first thing I'd like to do is check the overall width of the, of the area, including the building columns, so that when we do our drawings, we can, we can lay it out a little more accurately. Then I'm gonna check the height, the lowest overhead obstruction, the height of the building, and then I'm gonna uh, check the, uh, the overall length and measure each of the bays as we go on down the, the length from, from one end to the other. And so with that being said, let's get started with the width. Okay, I'm getting ready to look at the overall width of this crane area, uh, meaning the, the overall width of the building frames inside, inside here. You can see that it's a tapered column. They're, they're not straight on both sides. The higher this goes, it gets wider up top. So in order to get the accurate information we wanna get for the width and the clear width, we start with getting the overall width from outside of this column to the outside of the opposite side column and this is 53 foot six inches overall width. Because these are tapered columns, I'd like to try to get at least a rough idea of how wide it is up at the top and check it on both sides to make sure that we know what kind of clear width area we have to work with to determine the span of the crane. That will help us you know, narrow down and come up with a, a more accurate span to quote. Okay, here we have a situation where we have a somewhat typical straight building column. And this is handled a little differently than the tapered column. In this particular situation, all we really have to do is verify that A, all the columns are basically the same width. When you look down the face, there might be a, a wider or narrower column somewhere else. We always need to know what the furthest point in is on any widest column, which brings in the, the clear area that we have to work with. So in this particular case, I'm just going to measure from inside of column to inside of column. Also check to make sure that none of the columns have obstructions, piping, conduit, anything attached to these columns that may, may affect the location of where we set columns to support our runway system for the path of the crane. I'm gonna take a look at the floor seams in the floor and try to find out on all of these columns if the floor seams are exactly the same and they join the columns in the same locations. We don't ever want to get anchors too close to the seams in the concrete. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that the floor seam is, is exactly centered at this column, which is great because that means we can straddle the seam with our anchors and base plate and column and know that we don't have to necessarily offset the column. So this is an ideal situation where we can center our column and, and put it exactly where we want to. But I wanna to look to see if there are any indications of cracking or inclusions of any kind that would cause us to say, there might be an issue once we drill and set anchors and put a load on this floor. And right now I see one, one crack over here and it kind of comes at an angle and joins in with the expansion joint seam in the floor. Our column looks to be located generally about two feet away from this crack. So that could potentially be a concern 
So it's just something to be aware of so that we are aware when we go to figure out how we want to quote it the right way. Now we've moved on to the next column and it is not the same exact scenario with the floor seams. This one has the diamond seam which goes around the column. In this particular case, it's really not a concern because we have wide tapered columns that bring our crane column out beyond where the point of the diamond joins the center seam in the floor. This seam is still on center with the column, so that's good to know. We know that we can still put a column exactly in line with the building column without offsetting this way or this way. If this was a straight column in the same position with the same diamond, this diamond would be a concern because it's closer to where our column would actually sit on the floor. So we would have to know the information on the diamond, maybe have uh, enlarged base plates with anchors spread out further to miss the seams in the floor. But the key to the whole thing is making sure that when we put anchors in the floor that they don't get too close to any one of the seams. If you had an anchor real close to the seam, you'd end up getting cracking from where you drilled eventually into that seam, which could cause additional settling or further cracking. So those are the kinds of things we just want to be aware of so that we can kind of incorporate that in with the estimate when we, when we do the proposal. I'm gonna take a look at the building columns. We wanna measure the flange width of the column, and this is eight inches. And we also need to check the thickness to know what we're gonna be welding our tiebacks to since we're putting floor supported columns that are gonna be tied back. Okay, the flange thickness on this building column is right at a half inch. So that's, that's gonna be acceptable. The next thing we want to do while we're at one of these tapered columns is to get a clear height of the building column. I have my laser. Now I'm going to set this on the floor and shoot straight up to the lowest part of where the roof meets the column. That would be our clear height from the floor up to the lowest part of the roof. All right, it looks like we've identified the, the main overhead obstruction to be this long strip heater right in the middle of the crane bay area. I'm gonna measure the height of that so we can get a clearance from the floor up to it. If we take four inches away from that, just to allow for a minimum of three inches of OSHA clearance over any moving item, which will determine the height of the crane above the floor. Okay, now I'm gonna check the overall length of, of the area that we're, that we're measuring to put the crane in, as well as the base centers from column to column to column to column to column and make sure they're all the same, see if there's any differences. Once I get each of the four bays that they're asking us to fill in with the crane, that'll give us the overall length. So to do that, we can shoot from the web to the web of the next column. So that'll get us close to what the true center to center distance is. It's 24, 11 and three quarter, which means they're on 25 foot centers. Right away, I'm noticing that there's a, a large obstruction on this side, which I will be taking a picture of. If that's going to stay, and it will, in, in fact, probably impact either the span or the height. I'm seeing the lowest, what I think is the lowest overhead obstruction right over top of my head here, and a pipe up top. Um, I'm seeing a water, a water supply pipe over here on this side that I'm going to want to take a picture of. There's also a large obstruction here on this side that I don't know if the customer is gonna leave in place or remove. The overhead door is back here. Some other items to always be aware of and look for regarding obstructions would be things like low hanging lights, heater units, conduit running up the face of the flanges of columns. So any piping, conduit, ductwork, Fans, overhead ceiling fans tend to be low and those are easily missed if they're not being looked for. Large uh, water supply lines and piping, those are just a few of the many possibilities of obstructions that should be looked for. This, this is a very important aspect so that it's not a surprise later. Okay, now, this is actually the closest location for an overhead door to the crane area itself, but as you can see, it is not an ideal 
location to try to bring in long cranes or beams, making this, making this turn into the side door with this area being such a narrow drive. And this is only a 10 foot door, which is usually on the narrower side of what we would like to have. Even in a straight line, this is somewhat narrow and we'd, we'd, we'd like to at least try to always have at least 10 feet wide. But when you combine that with the fact that this is a narrow side aisle with no room to really turn or, or bring it in somewhat straight, that angle that's needed to get it in just makes it super difficult. So what we'll do is go to the end of the building and use the larger overhead door so that we have a straight shot getting from there to here. Okay, since we did not have the ideal overhead door nearest to the crane area, we've located this door further on down at the end of the building, which allows us a straight shot in from a much larger door and a much larger area outside for offloading and bringing in equipment. I'm gonna check the width and the height of the door so that we have that information as well. It's almost a 14 foot door wide and that's 14 as well. If you're looking for more information on overhead cranes, then our free Overhead Cranes Buyers Course, Cranes 101, is a great place to get all the information that you need. You can find the course in the description below. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, drop it in the comments so we can get you an answer. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.